All right guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. So today I wanna to introduce you guys to a new car into the fleet. Some of you guys may have noticed the white S10 has not made too many appearances lately on the channel and there's a good reason for that. So as you guys know, I bought a ZR2 Colorado and I was basically kind of daily driving this with the S10 and I have a four month old daughter right now. So driving a single cab S10 every day doesn't really make sense if you can't pick her up or take her anywhere. So the market's really hot right now and I did sell the truck. Got exactly what I wanted for it. Um, it was actually a pretty good dollar amount for a square body S10. I was, I was able to part ways with it. I don't feel bad about it at all. So the other part of getting rid of the S10 was buying the camper which this is a lifted Flagstaff SE. I have a video out on this thing. So if you guys wanna check out more info on the camper, uh, head over to that video. All right, so the ZR2, of course, was my daily driver. And I was kind of putting a lot of miles on that. That truck's getting 17, 18 miles per gallon. Not really bad, but that's my adventure rig. I do not wanna be using that to drive back and forth to work, haul my daughter in. I, I just don't wanna do that with it. I need a daily. I need another daily. So. I'm gonna show you guys what I replaced the S10 with, and I actually picked this up for $2,000 cheaper than what I sold the S10 for. So, here's my new daily, guys. <laughs> okay, so I know some of you guys are thinking, why would you buy that? What? This is a joke, right? No, this is not a joke, this is my daily. So, there's a secret, though. You guys probably haven't noticed it just quite yet but this is an impala ss so i actually just bought the car like literally two days ago i have done nothing to it it is this car is completely stock as a box of rocks there is nothing done to it at all so i'm gonna go through the whole build with you guys and make the ultimate daily driver sleeper impala ss out of this thing so as you guys know well, as actually some of you may not know this, but this car comes with a 5.3 <laughs> from the factory making 303 horsepower and 323 foot-pounds of torque. And she's capable of running a 14.1 one at 101 miles an hour, according to Car and Driver. So I picked this up off of the second owner and she had it since 2009. This is an 08 model. So this thing is pretty minty fresh, if I do say so myself. This thing has 113,000 miles on it, which is not bad for a 5.3. Those things literally, they'll run 300,000 miles, no problem. Now the rest of the car, I don't know how long it's gonna last. That's to be determined. I'm sure the trans will probably blow in the next like 30 to 50,000 miles, but we're gonna see. You know, she took care of the car. It might last 170, 180, we may get 200,000. And this thing is in immaculate condition. So one other thing, I am gonna, I have headlights coming kind of a common problem with the like you know mid 2000s gm stuff of course electrical gremlins yeah that's another thing who cares though we got a 5.3 no one cares about that so the other thing is this is a sleeper you know this is a car that you see going down the road and you don't even think twice about this thing having 300 horsepower and being able to melt the front tires that is not something that you see every day so i had to scoop this thing up guys i just could not pass it up so the only thing I didn't film was putting the battery in and that was absolutely terrible by the way So if you have one of these cars and you put a battery in it <laughs> Get your bungee cord and like get this out of the way. This is seriously. It's almost impossible without getting the junction box out of the way But back to the car overall. It's actually pretty clean. The engine is in good condition The only thing I've noticed is there's been like a little mouse in here and he's gnawed on this and I checked all the wires out They look okay um I cleaned it up and just vacuumed it a little bit just for this video, but it's not bad. You know, this car obviously looks like something you'd roll up to at the grocery store, but in reality, it would absolutely eat any Honda Civic Si or somebody that just literally did not know what was coming. <laughs> this is going to be a really fun car. I'm going to put it that way. So total dad mobile, you know, leather inside. Look at this. This is an 08. You never see these cars this nice. That's, that's the benefit. The one thing about these cars, the rear doors, like literally you get it to here and just kind of like just push on it, it shuts itself. So I, they slam if you don't know that. But anyway, look at this interior. 
This is freaking mint. I mean, dude, for an 08, there's literally sunroof option too. Like, and everything in here works. Literally everything works. For what I gave for it, that is unbelievable. Especially in, in 2022, post-COVID, with inflation at its highest. And I got this car for under under kbb i'm actually about three thousand dollars under what a dealer would book this thing at so it was posted for about two hours on marketplace over here in mars hill north carolina i contacted the lady immediately and bought it i was like i cannot pass this up this is just it's too good now this isn't like the deal of a lifetime but it's a pretty good deal for what it is i mean look just a skosh of wear on the driver's seat and she's showing 113,000 on the clock. And I already have tons of stuff on the way for this car. So this is the first video of this thing being bone stock. I mean, the exhaust, you can't even hear this car run. Like it is super quiet. All right, guys. So if you have one of these 2000-ish era cars with the active fuel management, I want to go over one thing really quick. The active fuel management is a joke. It is a complete disaster and it ruins basically the engine completely. I mean, it makes oil consumption problems. It's just a, it's not good. The other thing I'm, I've actually got right here. So this is uh, basically an Amazon special. This is GT motor. And what this thing does, is it disables the active fuel management in the car. So, okay, I'm gonna explain a little bit. What What is active fuel management? Okay, so active fuel management, the AFM, drive on demand, whatever you wanna call them. Um, basically what this does, this system will turn off cylinders to save fuel economy. Okay, great idea, but all that valve train stuff is still moving and there's nothing happening under the hood. And it basically just eats up valve train components and makes it use oil and it can cause transmission issues. And oh, it's just really bad. So if you guys have one of these cars, any GM truck in general, okay, 5.3, I don't care what it is from like 2000, oh, we're gonna say 2006, four, somewhere in there when they introduced this all the way to current, like get rid of the drive on demand. It is awful. This little thing I bought right here, off of Amazon, you can literally type in AFM delete GT motor, it'll bring this up. This guy's $120. What it does, you disconnect the battery and you plug this guy into your OBD2 port and bam, you've got a drive on demand delete. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. This is the first mod we're gonna do to this car. So I'm gonna go out here real quick. We're gonna unhook the battery and hook it back up, plug this guy in and go for a drive and see, does it actually work? All right, guys, it's the next morning, and I did do a little drive last night. She's been running for a second, but you can see the fuel economy is at 17.3, almost 18. Uh, it did go down a little bit from sitting here idling, but believe it or not, the active fuel management in these cars actually makes a little bit of an impact on uh, fuel mileage. I'm not gonna say it's substantial, and that may be a little subjective because this was total city driving that I did yesterday. Basically, I ended up going into Jonesboro and running some errands and in the grocery store. Of course, you gotta take the dad car to the grocery store. You know, it's just fitting. Guys, yeah, so here's a little cold start real quick after the Dynamax muffler install. I still have a resonator and this thing is actually still pretty quiet. So I'm gonna go ahead, give you guys a little cold start and we're gonna do a resonator delete today and see how big of a change it makes. All right, so as you guys can tell, this thing is still super stealthy with the Dynamax exhaust on there. Still got the resonator, like I said, all stock other than a K&N intake. Got those fifth gen Camaro tips on here. They actually sound pretty good. Really low rumble. I mean, it's throaty. You know, it actually doesn't sound bad. So it's still, it's still giving me the sleeper vibe. Let's give it a few quick revs. Now keep in mind, these cars are limited to 3,500 when you rev them. So that just kind of gives you an idea. It's really, 
like not even noticeable. So guys, if you do any kind of muffler on this car and you leave the resonator, go ahead and expect it to, you know, be really quiet. I was actually kind of, I was kind of bummed out after I did the exhaust because I was like, man, this thing is, is really, it's really quiet after the exhaust install. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. Today, we're going to delete the resonator and I really wanted to give you guys a before and after, a true before and after because most of the videos on these cars, they're filmed with a toaster and uh, usually it's people just cutting the mufflers off, which sounds like garbage. So what I'm going to do today is try to keep this car stealthy without being too overbearing to yell at you that it's an LS motor. So one of the other things I did is I went ahead and replaced the headlights just with some OEM lots. They're actually pretty cheap. You can get these for around 120 bucks. They make the car a lot nicer at night. You can see so much better with them. Also did the drop-in LED headlights too. So it's a touch more modern uh, than the stock halogens that come in the car. Obviously I need to wash this car, but the past few days it has been raining for like three days straight. This is the first nice day that we've had. So from the back, you can kind of tell something's going on. It's got a nice sound to it, but it's really, really too quiet, guys. All right, guys, got the resonator deleted. You can tell a slight difference in it without the resonator. So I just want to see how much of a difference does it actually make? You can actually hear the car a little bit better now. Let's go for a little road test here. See if you can actually hear this thing. Oh yeah, you can hear it now. <laughs> Melting the tires a little bit there. Road's just a skosh wet. This thing doesn't stand a chance at getting traction on a wet road. So yeah, the muffler, uh, I gotta say the resonator is really not doing a lot on these cars, but it does dampen you quite a lot. You can actually hear it now. Yeah, that definitely made a difference in the car. Obviously the catalytic converters are really what's driving the sound on this car, but it's still a sleeper. It's still, it still has that sleeper vibe, but now you can actually kind of hear the car a little bit. So that's good. That's, that's a good start. I'll have to say though, if you're thinking about deleting the resonator, um, as far as sound wise, if you do a, if you do a muffler on the back of this car and you delete the resonator, it's like just a touch louder, not much. I mean, it's just enough to actually notice that the car has an exhaust system on it. So all right, so here's a little test with the resonator delete on kind of a cold start-ish, not really cold start, but we're gonna see what it sounds like and let you guys hear the difference between them. if you guys can tell but there's an immediate difference once you get that resonator off it's much deeper I'm really surprised you can hear the car idling now and it definitely sounds throatier but it's not too too aggressive so we still got that crazy sleeper vibe going on the fifth gen tips definitely set it off I think they look awesome on there it's not too overbearing you got done a really neat job underneath installing these mufflers and the resonator delete, I do think is worth it. So if you're gonna do this, uh, I would definitely, if you're gonna put mufflers on it, you wanna get rid of the resonator, that is a must. I mean, you can't even hear this car run if you have the resonator on there and any kind of muffler on the back, period. I, I think you're gonna be disappointed. So if you wanna do this and keep this car daily driver status, this is what you wanna do right here. It is absolutely perfect. And these cars stock, you don't want to straight pop them, okay? This thing stock is going to sound like, you know, a freaking squatted truck in South Carolina. You know, <laughs> unless you have a cam or some compression or heads, you do not want to straight pop these cars. They just sound like absolute garbage when you floor them. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a little pull here in the uh, old SS. So let's do a little pull and see how this thing does. We're just gonna roll out into it because it's probably gonna wanna spin a little bit. All right, here we go. <laughs> I 
Oh my god. <laughs> it's so wrong, dude. This thing is not supposed to be this fast. <laughs> it actually, like, it throws you back pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of people that's probably thinking that this car is extremely slow and has no clue, and with the exhaust on it, it, it comes alive when you floor it. Like, so when you floor it with this exhaust, it, it definitely starts to perk up, but just driving it normal, you would never know. And that's kind of why I love this car being a sleeper. That was pretty quick to 60. I mean, I rolled into it because the roads, as you can tell, are just a skosh wet. Not really wet, but there's some damp spots. It tried to rain earlier this morning. And I didn't want to give you guys just a smoke show with blow, you know, absolutely blowing the tires off. So we went for a roll out there and it did pretty good. I, I gotta say, uh, that definitely woke it up a little bit. This car is a lot of fun to drive. All right, guys, so one more thing I wanted to go over real quick. Obviously, we're going with the super sleeper look here. As a lot of you know, I'm into mountain bikes and stuff, so I ride pretty much like four to five days a week. I had to have a way to haul it, and obviously this car is more than capable of doing it. So if you guys want to haul a mountain bike with an Impala SS, all you need yourself is a Kurt trailer hitch and an anti-rattle. Uh, you can get these on Amazon for like 15 bucks and it will support the adapter so that it doesn't really move. And that's really solid. The only movement is actually within the rack. So that's pretty good. That is really solid. The other thing I wanted to go over, look how clean this car turned out. So I didn't actually have it all that clean when you guys saw it earlier in the video. So I wanted to go over this thing real quick and just show you how minty fresh this car is. So this is after a fresh wash. I mean, look at that paint. She is mint, absolutely mint. Here's the inside, all leather, and it looks brand new. Detailed everything up. Got me a little Bluetooth thing going on. Look at that. Sunroof. in really good shape the only thing i had to do was clean out the drains in the sunroof and bam leak just went away so if you want to clean the drains out in these cars go ahead and pull this inner fender clean all that out run you some uh, weed eater string or something that's not going to tear up the hose down in there and you'll unclog it no problem it fixes your leak look at these wheels i mean that is like new so there you go guys there's a little overview of the impala and this is kind of like close to being finished with just some simple stuff so you're just gonna have to stick around i do have a lot more coming for the car so keep in mind this is far from over like we we're literally just beginning on this thing so i don't know how far i'm actually going to go with it but everything so far has held up great i've daily drove it for about a week now and i'm really impressed with this car even with the drive on demand deleted, I'm still averaging 18 and a half to 19 miles per gallon. Um, and that's city highway combined. So if I was on the highway, I would get obviously probably more like 22, somewhere in there. I don't think it would get 24 with the DOD turned off, but it's gonna get somewhere around 20. This is the ultimate daily driver sleeper car right here. Go find yourself one, you will not be disappointed. I'm sure if something breaks on it, I'm gonna hate life, but we will drop the K member and deal with it when we have to. So there you go guys. There's just a quick update on the car and where I'm uh, where I'm at with it Where we're going with it. You're just gonna have to subscribe. Go ahead and give this video a like too That's gonna help get it out there to the masses. So I'm gonna have to catch you guys in the next video